Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And you keep wanting them, so we keep doing them. Today we're going to be looking at an RV comparison head to head, side by side, <laughs> for the first time ever. I'm not going to have to go traipse in a football field across a lot to jump back and forth between two trailers. The Coachman, Catalina, and the Forest River Wildwood. We're going to be looking at them head to head, side by side, comparing where they're similar, where they're different, and trying to help identify which one might be a little bit better fit for you. And as always, if you appreciate these videos, Hit the like, subscribe buttons, follow along, give our team here the opportunity to earn your business here at Halet RV, and we'll be able to keep putting these videos out for you. Now these are two really awesome trailers. I'm a big fan of both. And the overall feel that I have is Catalina is that kind of, they're, they're that in the pocket infantry soldier, very classic, very safe, very solid option. Wildwood, a little bit wilder. They're a little more adventurous. They're a little more progressive. They're a little different than most things in this class. But at the end of the day, they both accomplish the same thing, just in a different way. Now, one of the, uh, well, really two of the biggest things I can get out of the way right away. First is price. And they will basically be an absolute wash in that regard. There are instances where a Wildwood's a few bucks cheaper. There's instances where a Catalina's a few bucks cheaper. But typically, if they're both building the same model, they are within 50 to 200 dollars of one another for the most part they are head to head price point competitors now i do want to make a quick housekeeping note today we're talking about a full wildwood we are talking about a full catalina legacy we are not discussing the wildwood x light or the catalina summit series we're looking at both big brothers from these two big time brands and another area you see a lot of similarities the construction these two campers are built about as close as two campers could possibly be built. Despite the fact they are built by different people, different companies, different facilities, they build the structure of their RVs essentially the exact same way. They both have a 3 8 OSB roof decking with 16 inch on center roof studs, uh, 16 inch on center average wall studs, average of 12 inch on center floor studs. They both have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. Catalina does a little more cross bracing in the floor, but it's not that Wildwood does none. So overall, the general build, like they run on the same chassis. The physical skeleton really couldn't be much more similar, but cosmetically and the way that they do like everything else often differs wildly. So they're similar in a lot of ways, but what I want to focus the majority of this video on here is where they're different. I want you to understand the different identifying qualities of these two brands so that you can really kind of zero in on which one just speaks a little bit more loudly to you. And if you need a little more information, you give our team over there at Halet RV a call. We're family owned and operated. And all we ask in return for this video that we're putting together and all the time and effort that goes into it is just a fair opportunity to earn your business. Seems reasonable to me. So where are they different out here? Well, on a Catalina, uh, their awning lighting is multicolor, multi-strobe function. It's, they have one of those like crazy party awning disco job things for a patio picnic party. And uh, they're a lot of fun. All joking and funny looks aside, they're a lot of fun. It is really neat. I think most of the time you're probably gonna find it like on one color and just leave it there. But it isn't, some people are like, I like red, I want teal or whatever. It's cool that you can pick that color. Some people don't like a bright white. Some people don't like blue etc. You know, you, you get the idea. Now, one little uh, feather in the cap of Catalina, you see that front set of steps. Uh, Wildwood and Catalina uh, both can have stable steps. They're standard on a Wildwood, actually. They are optional on a Catalina. You'll notice that in both cases, though, it's only the main entry door that gets the stable step. In a Catalina, your off door, like the bedroom door here, if you have a second door, they at least have those anti-slip aluminum plank steps, which is frankly kind of nice. And this is a significant one for a lot of people. Catalina windows are tinted. Wildwood windows are not. We'll see that when we go over there. What's the benefit either way? Uh, tinted windows keep the RV a little bit cooler from less sunlight and they uh, keep the nosy neighbors out. They also reduce some sun fade. We'll talk a little bit about why Wildwood does their non-tinted windows though and how it actually is a little bit beneficial for them as well. There's advantages both ways. One of the other things that you can't really see super overtly here though is when you get right up close to the skin on the sidewall of a Catalina slide just just like just like this right here. If you see that you see how it's kind of like looks like cottage cheesy and grainy? Well that is that's cold. 
That is a, uh, a seal gripping slide wall. It will make sure that those wiper seals really wipe all the way in or all the way out. Now, you see how the slide side window of a Catalina doesn't open for airflow. Log that in your memory bank. We'll come back to that in a minute. A Catalina dresses their wheel wells up nice with this aluminum fender trim. And I've talked about this in my Catalina versus j flight video, but compared to plastic fender trim, it just basically can't fail. It can't get brittle from the sun. It can't get wind buffeted. It can't crack. It's just always going to look good. Now, this is, I think, uh, another thing that really stands out for Catalina. Little feature, big impact, easy to miss when you're shopping, though. But when you're camping, you're going to go looking for it and find it might not be there on the Wildwood. And that is an outside shower. Standard on a Catalina, optional on a Wildwood. And weirdly, we have almost nobody request it when they're buying or building a Wildwood through Halet RV. And that has always really surprised me. Now, another thing Catalina does very nicely out here is you see that cleat for the outside shower head right up here by my nugget? They put it out here outside of the outside shower enclosure. It takes a little more labor time to do it, but it actually could let me take a little outdoor cowboy shower Maybe put on a little free show for the neighbors. <laughs> you know why it's free? Because nobody paid to see that. Mm. Now, Catalina has that drunken uncle pet leash latch thing over there, which I actually heard from somebody the other day said did manage to keep their dog from chasing a squirrel around the campsite. So I guess it's doing the trick. Now, I suspect that was a little dog like mine and not like a bull mastiff. <laughs> Actually, I think if you have like a big, big dog, I don't know that I would use that because I'd be afraid of a big, big dog with the strength of a horse ripping off your fender skirting. But, you know, I, you can just tie him to the bumper if need be. Um, they also, like a Cherokee, use that flip down 200 pound rated cargo rack on the back, which doubling as a spare tire, you don't, a uh, spare tire holder, not a spare tire. You don't need to take the tire off to drop that rack, by the way. It's, it, it'll flip down and clear the bumper, no problem. So handy for bicycles, portable generators, coolers, things like that. Uh, so what about the Wildwood? Well, you don't see it, but Wildwood does something there that Catalina doesn't. And that is in a full-fledged Wildwood, like we're looking at, they do block and brace the rear wall of most models to be able to accept an aftermarket ladder. They don't offer one from the factory. It's a little inconsistent. So the best thing you can do is if you're looking to purchase an RV here from Halet RV, we will call and verify if that specific floor plan is or is not ready for a rear ladder because they don't provide us with a list. Or if you already own a, uh, a Wildwood, you can contact uh, Wildwood customer service with your VIN number and they can let you know if it is or is not blocked and braced for a rear ladder. Kind of working our way backwards here through the Wildwood. So they don't do that fancy schmancy aluminum fender trim. Instead, they just use clean little where they have to trim the aluminum for the fender well, they just trim it out instead of a big flappy piece of plastic. So Wildwood accomplished the same thing in a different way. And you're gonna hear me say that a hundred times. These two brands do the same end game. They just get there through totally, totally different paths. And nowhere I think is that more obvious than the way that they handle their breeze windows. They do this, they do their windows exactly the opposite as a Catalina. Some people, it's really gonna sway them one way or the other. Some people are gonna be like, I, I just don't care. They, they do the same thing. So on a Catalina, this window opened for airflow. This window did not. You see, it's the opposite on a Wildwood. Their idea here is that you can get air whipping through the slide, which is what a lot of people are looking for. And when you're not doing that, you're just treated to these huge, un like unobstructed, awesome panoramic views except for their uh, their poster in the window here, which naturally we take down before you take it home from Halet RV. You also notice again, Wildwood doesn't tint their windows. You're going, why, 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 why though? Um, there's logic to it. Their logic is when you want light in the RV, you want as much light as you can get. So they're providing you with all of the light that you can get. When uh, you want airflow, they've got it. When you want to block the sun, they have roll down blackout shades to totally block the sun out. And I realized I didn't set the shades up on this one. Hold on, just a moment. Roll down blackout shades, <coughs> like I was saying. But notice the, the blackout shades on the outside layer have that bright white exterior. That is to help reflect sunlight to keep the heat out of the RV. So when you want light, you get more of it. When you wanna block the sun out, 
and keep the camper cooler, you can do that to an equal, if not more effective degree. Which one's better? Hard to say, because they both do it so different, but the same. I don't know. Another thing is, it's a little more obvious on a wild one. You see that it's uh, slide awning prepped up there. If you want to add some LCI slide awnings, a little easier on the wildwood. But remember, the Catalina had that little seal gripper job on the slide walls. Shouldn't make a difference in how the slides work, but anything to give me a little more peace of mind, something I'm happy with. Now, Wildwood does not have optional stable steps. They are just standard. And there's some people who don't want them. So maybe that's a feather in the cap of Catalina. I think more people are going to like the stable steps, but considering they're optional, I, I think you can get it either way. Uh, the LCI step that uh, Catalina is using, it has a bigger top plank. So it's kind of like an extra seat on your campsite. That being said, I can sit on this more ride step just fine. But Wildwood is using the newer type of Morides that don't have those annoying little adjustment pins to extend and, and, and lock the legs in place. It's got more of like what I'm calling the drawbridge system. It's so much better. But guys, I can't even tell you how many thousands of sable, sable? stable steps I've operated in my career. The fact that they're going to that easier system, uh, I'm all for it personally. Um, now, they both have outside speakers. Wildwood puts theirs down here which I actually like better because it keeps the campsite volume lower. It keeps the speakers broadcasting to your campsite, not up high where you have to broadcast to the neighbor's RV. So for me, that's a little bit of a factor. Um, there is a couple things though that Wildwood is doing here that as much as I like Catalina, to be fair, the Wildwood I think is winning in this regard. But remember, if they're winning in one regard and they cost the same overall, that means that Catalina is winning in something else. It's always a push and a pull. The first of which is the way that Wildwood handles their underbellies. Both campers have an enclosed underbelly, but first of all, with a Wildwood, a full Wildwood, not an X-Lite, it is an enclosed heated belly. It's forced air heated, not just radiant heated like you find in the Catalina. Also, I prefer the material of the Wildwood underbelly enclosure as compared to a common, what looks like plastic cardboard. It's a, it's a corrugate, uh, a, no, I'm sorry, fluted polypropylene in the uh, Catalina. This is what Wildwood calls their accessibility. This is the same thing that Forest River does on their luxury fifth wheels. It's a uh, molded plastic enclosure that comes in like eight foot segments. So if you need to drop individual segments for service, you can and put it back up and you'll never notice the difference. However, uh, the uh, Catalina underbelly, you either have to spend a lot more labor money to drop it or you have to cut it with a Stanley knife and then tape it back in place. That being said, underbelly service is thankfully a very rare thing in both cases. The other thing here, that yellow bar that you're looking at, the strong arm stabilizer jacks. They will take almost all of the wiggle and the jiggle out of the RV as people walk around or come and go or roll over at night. If you're seasick, if you don't have sea legs, if you're just motion sensitive, etc., you will absolutely prefer the default uh, performance of a Wildwood in terms of stability. That being said, you could easily add these to like literally any RV, guys. They're not hard, they're not expensive. It's just that it's nice that it's done from the factory level on a Wildwood. Now they're both using magnet holdbacks for the baggage doors, which is great. But this little variance right here, it's a little weird. So Wildwood gives us on the camp side of the RV, a way bigger door. You can see I got a big old head and this thing dwarfs my head by comparison. And I think that they actually have a larger pass-through compartment, but I don't know that the one is actually any more functional than the other. And you're going, what do you mean? Isn't bigger, better? Can't you do more things? Here's what I mean. If you really look at it, they have the same width on their baggage doors. And that's not a small baggage door getting in that Catalina. And from side to side, it's about the same size. The Wildwood underbelly pass-through is a little bit bigger, their front pass-through compartment. Thing is, Catalina gives you the same kind of medium-sized baggage door on both sides of the camper. If you start looking, this is one of those detail things, and I don't mind sharing the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between here at Halo RV. Wildwood gives us only a smaller door on this side of the RV. I suspect it's for, you're going, why would they do that? Well, I think it's because when you're shopping the RV, you tend to buy this side of the RV. So I think it is there because the big camp, the big camp kitchen, or not, hmm, outside storage door on this side of the RV of a Wildwood, 
has proved that it helps sell the camper a little bit more and they're able to save a few bucks here and reinvest it in things like the strong arm stabilizer jacks or the slide awning prep, some other things that maybe you find more functional and beneficial. Now, you can actually still get to the Wildwood pass-through storage from the inside of the RV as well. So the small baggage door, does it matter? I don't know. That's kind of for you to decide. If you appreciate being real fair and really looking at the nitty gritty potential and comfortable details like that, definitely hit subscribe and follow along because you know we, we try to pull no punches here. Now, if I missed anything outside of either of these RVs, please leave me a message, speak up. I want everyone to be able to get as much information as they can from these videos, but I know I talk a lot, so I'm trying to move a little faster than normal. So I want to jump inside. We're inside the Catalina interior right now. I want to start by looking at the living room and we'll jump around to like kitchen and all that stuff. At the time of this filming, Catalina's done a different thing with their entertainment center. A legacy series Catalina that is specifically in question in this video has an all-in-one TV entertainment soundbar combo. Naturally, I have to pull those down and we have to store them here at Halo RV so they don't go tiptoeing down the highway on their own accord. <sighs> which that's a, that's, a different, that's a different story for a different day. But anyway, um, they, it's just a different thing that they've done with their entertainment center. Now, beyond that, when you go through the Catalina living room, you'll, you'll not see anything like really new or amazing to write home about, but you don't see anything insufficient or poorly executed. You see normal sofa, normal dinette sit, uh, setups. You see very traditional layouts and interiors. And that's kind of where I was saying... Wildwood is, it really feels, it's that simple, neat, smart, safe brand of camper. It's an infantry soldier. It's in the trenches. It gets the job done. Now, I was actually about to step out of the camper when something else occurred to me. I give a little bit of a nod in terms of interior lighting to the Catalina. It's not that they necessarily use more lights. They do use a couple more than the Wildwood on the interiors. Their lights tend to be a little bit higher intensity and they're placed very intelligently so that the model always is really light and really bright with very minimal number of bulbs eaten away at your potential battery reserves. And it's certainly not that the Wildwood lighting package is insufficient. Just for some reason, the Catalinas always feel and read a little bit brighter to me. I think maybe it also has to do with their, their lighter wood tones. Um, in both campers, you, you, you don't change the wood. Like in a J flight, you can change wood options, but J flight's like the only one that does that. Catalina, Cherokee, Wildwood, the wood is the wood. And I hope you like it. And if not, I got a different brand of camper here for you at Halo RV that you might like better. But, uh, decors. Catalina gives you a couple different fabrics. This is what a Wildwood looks like. And this is the only thing a Wildwood looks like. And if you don't like it, we better be looking at a different brand of camper or you better be painting it. <laughs> But remember how I said Catalina is kind of that safe, traditional feeling? There's very little traditional about the Wildwood Versa Lounge here. And I tell you, I am personally a fan. I, I'm trying to remain as unbiased as possible. I like this. I like this a lot. The moment I saw it, it instantly catapulted Wildwood up way higher on my personal, ooh, I like that brand kind of list than it had ever been before. I always thought they were okay. But all of a sudden, recently here, they've like, mmm, they're really good. Like, I really like them. This thing is sweet. I've got a full separate video on everything the Versa Lounge does that's six plus minutes in and of itself. But as you're seeing here, it allows you some different kind of seating arrangements and it has tons of storage below it that traditional RV seating just can't offer. Now, it can't open up into a hide bed It's not a theater seat. So the Catalina seating does have, actually in some senses, flexibility this does not provide. But overall, by default, there is more bang for your buck in this seating arrangement than any other single sofa, seating, dinette, combo setup I've, I've ever seen. So back to lighting real quick. I think Wildwood leans pretty heavily. Remember those big panoramic windows we talked about? They do let a flood of light in here. And that accent light uh, above the slide. And thank you, Wildwood, for making it white and not <laughs> disco blue, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I don't dislike the blue lights. And sometimes I do think they look very good. But I think that the white light, everybody prefers. Unless you're uh, Gizmo, the Mogwai from Gremlins. <laughs> Like, you, you remember him. By the way, you can't feed him after midnight. Isn't it 
technically always after midnight? Is there some other rule that I missed in that movie? Sorry, I get off topic. Anyway, back to living room and entertainment stuff. Wildwood, by default, no TVs. But they leave you huge spots for huge TVs if you're interested. Their sound bar is also Bluetooth and has an HDMI input for very expandable entertainment. And unless the floor plan doesn't allow for it, a Wildwood fireplace is standard. A Catalina fireplace is optional. So you tend to just see more of them in the Wildwood. I don't know which one does it better. I know there's some people who go, I don't care about a fireplace. And there's some people who love it. Uh, they just do it a little different. And you're going to hear that all over the place. So what about the kitchen? So let me flip around. So that's the living room. What about the kitchen? And the short answer is, they're close. They're very close in this way. They've done the living room very different. They've done the kitchen very similar. You'll find both a Wildwood and a Catalina use that sealed edge countertop material that you're seeing right there everywhere. They don't use it in just the kitchen that we're seeing. They also use it on the dining table, in the bathroom, etc. Like up on that entertainment center. They both do that. Wildwood uh, does a single dish track, uh, dish track, dish drying rack, there we go, sink cover, and they do a split sink. It's a 50-50 split sink. Some people like it, some don't. One other thing I want to point out here is Wildwood, uh, well, it varies a little bit by floor plan, but a lot of their models have drawers inside of doors like this. It has the same end function. It kind of requires an additional step, if you and you go, why would they do that then? From the manufacturing process level, this is easier to build, saves you a little bit of money. That's why they do it. Because it has the same function, it'll save you a couple chunks of change. So why not go that route? Now, everybody and their brother seems like they've gone with these 12 volt DC compression fridges. Wildwoods is the reason. They were the first mainstream manufacturer to standardize the use of those things. And as you'll see when we get over the Catalina, they have also recently adopted that. Catalina does one extra little thing on their fridge, though, that I really like. And that is the fact that Catalina includes a hard off switch for their 12-volt fridges. Now, most 12-volt fridges used in the RV business have a way of shutting off now. Not just going into standby, but going off. Um, it's not always obvious. It's not always easy to see. And it's easy to forget if you did turn that off and on, or like in the case of the Wildwood, I can turn it off. But every time I toggle the power to the coach of that thing, I've also toggled whether or not that fridge is on or off. So it'll easily turn itself back on. This I can make sure just doesn't do that. Very handy if you are in storage, have limited battery capacity, there, there's benefits to it. Um, one of the areas that they're going to vary is the cabinet construction between the two brands. Catalina is pocket screwed, whereas uh, Wildwood, it, it does use a dual stapled fastener. So a lot of people prefer the Catalina style of cabinet construction. I feel very confident saying from many, many years of hard, concentrated experience doing this, about a dozen years now, I don't personally believe either way matters. I, I don't, because I see older RVs come into our used inventory with the same stapled cabinets that I see in a Wildwood all the time. And cabinet problems are really, really rare. This makes me feel better being all screwed together, but in practice, I don't know that it matters. Kind of like the drawers inside of a door thing. Wildwood, they're doing what really matters, and if they can accomplish the same thing for a few less dollars, they'll spend that money elsewhere like those stabilizer strong arm things that we talked about. Now, uh, Wildwood gave us that one dish drying rack cover over a split sink. Wild, did I say Wildwood? I think I did. Catalina, by contrast, gives us the flush mount sink covers right here over a giant farm sink. So you like one basin sink, you like a two basin sink, you want more counter space, you want the dish drying rack. It's pretty 50-50 either way. Um, beyond that, we talked about the drawers inside a door thing on a Wildwood. You see that Catalina does give us just drawers right there in the kitchen, not drawers inside of doors. I think overall, if you really twisted my arm, I would give a slight nod to Catalina personally for their kitchen stuff, but it's, it's close. But when we jump up to the bedroom, I am going to give the nod to Wildwood. 
And I, and I think you'll see why. There's nothing wrong with the Catalina bedroom that we're in currently. They're very good about giving us uh, USB outlets on both sides of the bed. Wide open side stands where we can be CPAP friendly or if you are uh, you feel very claustrophobic, you won't feel trapped in there. Both Wildwood and Catalina are camp queens. That is it, they don't do anything longer. Certain Catalina models are actually camp kings, which is 70 wide. 74 long versus a camp queen that we're on which is 60 wide by 74 long both wildwood and catalina are very good about giving us room to be able to walk around that bed or expand to a true queen if you want to however well we'll get to that however in just a second i forgot to talk about the fact in the catalina bedroom you still have functional blinds but you do go to metallic mini blinds versus the wildwood However, <laughs> you see how Wildwood's still giving us the exact same roll down blackout shades here in the bedroom that you saw in the living room. So they're a little more consistent. And I think arguably this does a little bit better job of keeping the sunlight out. You could say a little bit of light bleeds around them like you're looking at right here. I feel like you could box that in, but I don't think the, the metal blinds in the Catalina prevent the bleed any better. So I don't see that as an advantage. Now I talked about how they're both camp queens and they both give you room for a true queen. If you're looking at a Wildwood though, they give you more room. What's funny is it was actually very accidental how they did it. When Wildwood went from an old blunt front nose to the rounded nose that they have right now, the bed got sucked forward and it made more room. Where Wildwood does a couple more things in the bedroom that I really like though, is that if you look at that side stand over there, you see a household outlet, you see a USB outlet. And that's great. But you also see this interesting little cutaway cubby right there. And that's Wildwood's built-in CPAP storage. And I think that's brilliant. Now, if you're a little more claustrophobic, you might prefer the more open design of the Catalina. I think that cutaway there right by your face does help in that regard. I don't know that it's exactly the same, though. What is nice is being able to have a CPAP machine in there, out of the way, not having to string hoses all over the place, or, frankly just a phone charger inside there so that if it lights up at night because your friends have no respect for the fact that you're sleeping it off right now, um, you know, the light won't tend to disturb you. I don't know that it's necessarily better for everyone. I know that I really like that. One other thing Wildwood does very well, they both have storage under the bed, but Wildwood includes these totes right here and they also have like a shoe garage down below. And what I like about this is those totes can basically act like a dresser space. So you've got hanging space and dresser space in every Wildwood bedroom. You have hanging space in every Catalina, but not really any kind of dresser space in most Catalinas. So I'll give a nod to the Catalina kitchen and I give a real definite nod to the Wildwood bedroom. Now the bathrooms, I'm just gonna kind of call a quick wash it's very difficult to compare the bathrooms here because they vary so much by floor plan. Like two Wildwood bathrooms aren't the same, two Catalina bathrooms aren't the same. So how do you really compare them? So I, I think what I'm gonna say here is since both campers are six foot nine tall inside, which is something I realize I haven't mentioned before. Should have talked about that in the living room, I think. Uh, they both have the same shower height. Wildwood has an optional bathroom skylight. That being said, you'll always find them here at Halid RV. So technically I'll give a little nod to Catalina for that, but they both use like the same sealed edge countertops and they both use the exact same like toilet hardware. This is hard to get a good angle on, sorry guys. So I don't really, I don't know. I don't really think one bathroom is really that superior to the other. Because even though Catalina has a standard skylight, they also tend to do more curtains instead of shower doors like a Wildwood would do. And other than that, they're using the same sink, the same toilet hardware, or an equivalent, like they both are plastic toilets, for instance. They both use sealed edge countertops around the sinks. I just don't think the bathroom is really a significant point of make or breakedness for either of them, basically. So the million dollar question, which one's better, really depends on you. Because all these different trailers all have their own unique advantages, disadvantages, quirks, whatever you want to call it. And that's why we carry all these different things right here at Halid RV. So that you can zero in on the one that works best for you. And if we miss something, if there's something we can do better, if there's more information you need, 
please leave us a comment let let us know and if you have like hey uh, i'm looking at you know buying one of these can you tell me what's the difference between this feature and that feature between those two trailers you call our sales team inside we're always happy to come out with a tape measure if we need to measure something out check something out get you extra photos get you a little mini videos whatever we need to do to earn your business and that's all we ask ladies and gentlemen we are always happy to put out this kind of educational information in return for the fair opportunity to earn your business so if that sounds good to you give us a call here we'd love the chance to work with you at our family owned and operated facility so take care stay safe have fun and happy hail at camping everyone